Throw the bricks. Oh, Lord our God. It is us. Yes. Dale and Lee Haven, God. Yes. Standing in the need of prayer. Right now. Yes. Lord God, we thank you because we know that you're already in the midst. For the Bible says, when two or three are gathered, you are here, God. But I hope you felt that welcome this morning. And for that, God, we say thank you for showing up this morning and showing out. Lord God, as we go through your worship service, we praise you, we adore you, we magnify you. For you alone, you are God. And for that, we say thank you. Thank you Lord. Lord God, have your way in this place, oh God. Yes. I pray, God, that you will go from heart to heart. You will go from breast to breast. And because you are a God of peace, God, you know what we're in need of. So you do the work, God. You circumcise, God. And when the word goes forth, oh God, let us hide it within our hearts. Like David, oh God that we might not sin against you. Lord God, I'm asking for traveling mercies that are new every day. For those who are on their way, oh God. And for those who are on the conference call line or on YouTube, oh God. Come out and visit us at Dale and Lee Haven. There's nothing like this face-to-face -face worship service. We thank God for all that he has done. Thank you. And all that he is going to do in this place, we call me Amen. Let the church say amen, amen, amen and amen. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to give God some praise. Something like the advantageousness of the love. Yes, yes, yes. Come on, everybody. Let's give the Lord another hand clap of praise. Uh, looks like y'all trying to have church in this place on Palm Sunday. Amen, amen. Well, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make his boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let's exalt his name together because the Lord is good. God's mercies are everlasting, and his truth endures unto all generations. Can we give the Lord another hand clap of praise on this Palm Sunday morning? Amen. I was indeed glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Well, if this is your first time with us, I'm Reverend Ken Anderson. I'm the senior pastor at Dale and Lee Haven. United Methodist Churches in Middletown and towns in Delaware. And today is Sunday, March the 24th, Palm Sunday. Yes. Palm Sunday represents the end of the Lenten season uh -huh. and the beginning of passion or what most of us refer to as Holy Week. Amen. Yes, amen. This Holy Week will cultivate uh, in Good Friday and ultimately in what we refer to as Resurrection or Easter Sunday on March 31st. Amen. Amen. So we today, this morning, today, right now, are embarking on the most sacred week on our Christian calendar. The most important week in the life of a Christian. This morning, we want to welcome all of you that have joined us live on YouTube, all of you that are going to be accessing this worship service later on Facebook, all of you that are listening right now on the conference call line, and of course, all of you, all the many of you that look so beautiful to your pastor this morning, who have joined us right here in person on Palm Sunday at Lee Haven United Methodist Church. Would you just stand and give one another a hand clap of praise for being in here in the house of the Lord on this morning? Give your own self a hand clap. Amen, amen, amen. So good to see you, so good to see you. This morning you may be seated in the house of the Lord. We thank God for all of you this morning that are participating on this worship service 
There are so many that we want to remember as we go through this worship service today. We want to remember, of course, our dear Mother Munson, who's watching this right now, worshiping with us Hallelujah. as she continues to recuperate yes, at Amen. home. Amen. Amen. And Amen. we want to continue Amen. to remember the last I, the last text I got, uh -huh. Sister Angela Ajomo, her mother, Alice Powell was still holding on. You know, God God does what he does when he gets ready. Amen. The doctor said a week ago that she's gone. As of last night, she was still here. I told, I told Angela, amen. I, I told Angela, Sister Powell's going to go when she gets ready. Amen. We also want to remember uh, Brother Bob Lee Collins and his family this morning, as well as the Maloney's. The Maloney's this, this weekend had to participate in two home goings, one for his sister and one for her sister. My, my, my. When you think of them, just pray for them. Amen. This morning, we will be celebrating the sacrament of Holy Communion after the sermon. So if you're watching us remotely, uh, this would be a good time to grab a cracker, a piece of bread, some juice. I will bless those elements during the communion and you might, uh, you will be able to participate us with us even though you're not in the sanctuary on today. Palm Sunday brings into our memory the events that are core to our faith. They're really the meaning of why we are Christians. If the historical events of Palm Sunday and this upcoming Passion Week did not happen, you and I would be without hope. You and I would be without God in a world that has gone mad. Jesus. Can you Jesus. say amen? amen? Without the events of Palm Sunday and what followed days later, we would be forever in our sins, forever without hope tainted and eternally doomed to sin's destructive outcomes. Yes. Palm Sunday takes place immediately after one of the most extraordinary of all the miracles in the ministry of Christ. It would precede Christ's triumphant entry into the city of Jerusalem. Yes. And within 14 days, Jesus would be falsely arrested in the middle of the night. He would be tortured he would be scourged and made subject to one of the cruelest death sentences known to humankind yes. at that time. Our sermon today will remember that within days after Jesus raised his best friend, Lazarus, from the dead. Yes. Lazarus, who had been dead for four days, was found to be at dinner with Jesus at the yes. home of a disciple. Yes. Oh, my Lord. Yes. So my text this Palm Sunday is, guess who's coming to dinner? <laughs> guess who's coming to dinner? Amen. But at this time, I want to turn the further of this service over to our fine chair of Board of Trustees here at Lee, Lee Haven, who had to be here for a few hours on yesterday because in that storm, we lost power wow. here at Lee Haven. So, brother... Brother uh, Money said, hey, Pastor, we lost power. I'm out of here getting it, getting it together so we can have church. <laughs> Amen. So we thank God for the diligence of our trustees. Let's say amen as Brother Money comes at this time. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. Yeah, I'm sorry I had to put that pressure on Pastor because it reminds me of the days and I hope Mom will get mad at this, but sometimes when that electric light bill didn't get paid, left us kind of in the dark a little bit. So coming in here not having no power, I said, I'm not living those days again. It builds character, but I don't want to go back there again. So praise God, he let everything happen. Power came back also, it's all good, and now we're here. One more time, we're here again. To just praise the Lord. Because we didn't know where we were seven days ago. For those of you who have heard this little spiel, you probably know it by heart by now. But for those of you who don't, we didn't know where we was going to be several days ago. And so God just always continues to put that on my spirit to just to remind you. There's so many things going on in the world, we tend to forget a lot. So it's just a, a reminder that 
he puts on my spirit to say, well, if you keep giving it to him, somebody's going to like it. Somebody might be tired of hearing it. I don't know. But one thing that I do know is when we go home, we tend to watch reruns on TV. Right? We know what's going to happen from the beginning to the middle to the end. But somehow we still sit down at that TV and watch that rerun. So God said, well, it's okay if you give them a rerun because it's a bit, little better quality of a rerun that I'm giving you. Because I'm letting you know that from the last several days, bringing us up to right to this very day, God has truly blessed us. So just be reminded that the rerun from God is going to be coming to you. Praise the Lord. Please join me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for letting us be here again, Lord. And Lord, Father God, we didn't know where we was going to be. But it's such a refreshing thing that we know to be here again to just uplift you, Lord. Lord, Father God, we need you right now. And we're here to just magnify your name, Lord, Father God, to give you all the honor, all the praise and all the glory that you so deserve, Lord Jesus, because you are king of all kings, Lord, Father God. We give you the highest praise and we say hallelujah to your name, Lord. And Lord, Father God, you just said that if we have the faith the size of a mustard seed, but Lord, Father God, we trust in you. So we're going to put all of our eggs in your basket, Lord Jesus, because we know that if trials and tribulations come, joy will be here in the morning, Lord, Father God, because you said that you would never leave or forsake us, Lord, Father God. And so we lean on you, Lord, Father God. We stretch our hand out to thee, Father God. And we just know, Lord Jesus, that everything will be all right. Yeah. Even though our hearts hurt, Lord, Father God. Because someone here today, Lord Jesus, is hurt. Someone here today, Lord, Father God, is confused. Someone here, Lord, Father God, just don't know where to turn to the next day. So I ask you, Lord, Father, in the name of Jesus, speak to them, Lord, because they came here for a reason, Lord, Father, God. So as they leave this sanctuary today, they'll have such a better feeling, Lord Jesus, because you just showed your undying grace. You just showed your undying mercy because that's the God that you are, Lord Jesus. And we just thank you for being who you are on today, Lord. So, Lord, I just ask that you come into this service today, Lord Jesus, and do what you do, Lord Father God. As the speaker speaks, Lord Jesus, let it marinate in everyone's mind and hearts, Lord Father God. And so as they leave, Lord Jesus, there will be a better person. They can go out in this world and speak confidently that your word is your word, Lord Father God. And so we just thank you for the bloodshed and the sacrifice that you made on Pontius Pilate, Lord Jesus. So we just ask that you keep giving us the strength that we need just to get through another day, Lord Father God. Lord Jesus, this is our prayer of hope. This is our prayer of strength. And our hearts and souls says amen. amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. The Monday noonday hour prayer meets every Monday at 12 p.m. Led by Minister David Kane. If you have a prayer request that you would like presented during tomorrow's hour of prayer, please feel free to submit your request today to Minister David Kane's email address. Jesus, my hero, three nine two seven at G at Gmail dot com. If you desire to listen in on the prayer call, yes. you may do so by dialing 425-436-6391, access code 679-359. Yes, the Dale and Lee Haven Discipleship Bible Classes are held both in person and via Zoom. The in-person classes will follow our worship rotation at each church, 8.45 to 9.45 a.m. Please contact Brother Alan Hitchner at 
607-4138 or Reverend Gwendolyn Henry at 302-513-2336. Please see Reverend Gwendolyn T. Henry for the book, Experiencing God. The meeting Zoom, the Zoom meeting ID, 860-3387-0237. Passcode 902-343. The adult Bible study has met every Wednesday from 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. Get your Bible study, get your study Bibles and commentary ready. We're studying, believing the simple truth of God's word by wisdom. <clears throat> Excuse me. This Sunday... <clears throat> this Sunday, be led by Sister Diane Johnson and Brother Alan Johnson. Please see either them or Reverend Gwendolyn T. Henry for your books. The Zoom meeting ID is 957-219-9223. The passcode is 632-774. Yes. <clears throat> Youth Sunday School meets every Sunday from 945 to 1045. Please encourage the neighborhood youth, your children and grandchildren to attend. Sister Jean Archie, Sister Bronte Reed, Sister Letty Mitchell, and Sister Tori Perkins are in preparation for an anointed study. At this time, I'm going to turn the mic over to Reverend Henry, my cousin, to speak about the 360 meeting. So I just want to say that it is certainly an honor and a privilege to share with you that our catalyst team for both Dale and Lee Hayden, we are preparing for a youth alliance for the entire MOT area. This team has been on a year-long journey of study and class. So I just want to give them a round of applause right now. So Sister Cheryl, stand up. Sister Bronte, stand up. Reverend Anderson, stand up. Minister Kane, stand up. I don't know, I don't think I'm forgetting anybody, am I, Pastor? Oh, and Brother Allen, sorry. And that's my right hand, so I don't know how I forgot Brother Allen. But I want to say this and charge it to my head and not my heart, Brother Allen. Yes, you can. But I want to say that, and you guys can sit now. This team has been on a year long journey yes. to get this work done. And it was a lot of study and a lot of class time yes. online. So I am here to share with you that we have a call. And this is both Dale and Lee Haven. It's to build alliances and trust to meet the needs of a diverse community in the MOT area. And our first event will take place. And flyers were given out this morning by my Auntie Jane in the back. Um, but basically, we're going to have our first event. And we want you to invite your youth, your children, your grandchildren, the neighborhood kids, to come to the West Town Movie Theater yes, on yes, April 26th yes, yes. from 7 to 9. We're looking for chaperones, and this is one of many events. And it's not about the event, but it's about building an alliance in our community. And I am grateful for those who have helped even outside of our team. So I'm thanking God in advance. I wanted to share that with you. And on April 7th, Prepare to stay after service. We want both churches and Dale after our worship experience. We're going to have lunch by our kitchen committee, and we will be sharing the output of all the work that has been done. Amen. Amen. Somebody ought to give God a round of applause yeah. for the work that has been done. Yeah. 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 That's all right. Yeah. 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 Praise the Lord, you. church. Glory. At this time, we're going to ask our first lady, Dr. Devana, mm -hmm. to come up and do our greeting. Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, Dr. Devana. Yeah. Hey. Dear God. A beautiful first lady. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. 
part of Oprah Winfrey's staff. <laughs> <laughs> I always have jokes up here. <laughs> good morning, good morning. Praise the Lord, everyone. Always good to be in the house of the Lord. It's, it's just a blessing and an honor to stand before you. And I give God the glory and the honor for allowing me to be here today. Um, I just want to share with you, we had a fabulous day yesterday. The women, the women, the women. Sister Cheryl, Sister Cheryl. Um, please stand, Sister Cheryl. Yeah, um, so we, we just had so much fun um, learning about the women in the Bible who yes. have gone before us and have set examples of what it means to answer God's calling. Beautiful. And we all who attended, we had a chance to really think about the contributions that the women made in, in Women's History Month, I think is so fitting. Yeah. Um, and how we can learn from the lessons that these women taught us and how we can live our lives, yes. how we can apply that and know that we can answer the calling. And it's hard to do, but there's a good reason behind it. God has a plan. Yes. Uh, we had such fun in learning about the fascinating women and then making fascinators. So I brought mine home. They're really beautiful and for women, it was fascinating. <laughs> um, and so the women who were there, Sister Karen, Sister Aisha, Sister, who else is there? That uh, Sister Jean, Sister Renee. Sister Renee. Yeah. Um, we had a really Sister, good time. Sister um, Lavanya. Of course, and Reverend, and Reverend Gwen, Sister Lavanya. We just had a wonderful time yeah. in fellowship. You and it was nice to see. Yeah. And, and right, and my, um, I brought my sister-in-law, Adrian, and we had... Um, other women from other churches joining yes, us. So it was just su such a wonderful time. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you for the hard work and for the men who helped to set up and um, everything for that for that day. But if you missed it, you missed it. We have to do something else again. So thank you. Praise the Lord, everyone. Enjoy the service. Amen. Amen. That's all right. Dr. Gavana. Yes. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> beautiful day for the women yes. Yes. Yes, Lord. at this time we would like to acknowledge any visitors that we have here today if you don't mind standing up and uh, telling us who you are Amen. Yeah. okay well don't see any visitors and we just welcome you all here once again as we continue with the announcements I'll read this card first Thank you, Pastor Ken, Reverend Henry, Minister King, and all the members of Dale and Lee Haven, my sisters and brothers. Oh my goodness, thank you all for the cards, gifts, calls, and just thinking of me. Your prayers was a blessing. I enjoyed your visit. Also, I feel your love. Thank you, Marguerite Donis and family. Volunteers are needed for Wednesday pack and pray, hop food pickup, and bag preparation. Pack and pray, fourth Wednesday of each month, location Asbury UMC, 300 East Basin Road, Newcastle, Delaware, 19720. There are two shifts, 9 a.m., 12p to 12p to 2p. Say that fast three times. <laughs> April 24th, 2024, May the 22nd, 2024, and June 26th, 2024. Mm -hmm. Hop, food pickup and delivery, food to Dale, UMC, fourth Friday of each month, yeah. pickup location, Asbury, UMC, East Basin Road, uh, Newcastle, Delaware, 19720. Time, 8 a.m. Deliver bags to Dale, UMC. Dates April 26, 2024. May 24, 2024. And June 28, 2024. Bag preparation. Location, Dale, UMC. Time is at 9 a.m. Prepare bags with food 
for Dale Saving Grace Pantry. Yes. Dates same as above. Amen. Food giveaway location at Dale UMC time 12 p to 2 p. Dates April 26, 2024, May 24th, 2024, and June 28th, 2024. Right after the church service today, there will be an ushers meeting for uh, the Lee Haven ushers. Registration is no longer required in person worship. Masks are optional. For safety and security reasons, the doors of the sanctuary will be secured by 10, 1030 a.m. We will be live on YouTube by 10 a.m. Search Dale and Lee Haven UMC. The conference call line will be open. The number is 725-735-9405 and will be open by 945 a.m. At this time, we're going to have our prayer for the congregants, sick and shut in, by Minister David King. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let the church say amen. amen. I said, let the church say amen. amen. The Bible says I was glad when they said, let's go into the house of the Lord. Truly, we praise and thank God once again for aiding us to be here in his presence. We just praise and thank God for his word. Over 2,000 years ago, plus, as the pastor mentioned, that our Lord and Savior, heading up to the cross, riding on a donkey in a car, folks laid out palms and clothes on the roadway. Yeah. And they cried out, Hosanna, Hosanna. Yeah. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Yes. Hosanna in the highest. Yes. I say this morning, ride on, King Jesus, ride on. Ride on. That's R-I-D-E, ride on, King Jesus, ride on. All right. Because that's the Savior who we worship. Yeah. But in the meanwhile, there's much, much more work that has to be done yeah. on this side of the Jordan River. As the pastor mentioned, our dear mother, 95 years old. What did you do with Mother Munson? What did you do with Mother Munson? I believe when we all stand at the gates and stand at the mercy seat, Pastor, that I believe that the scroll is going to be rolled back and our mind is going to be recalled. What did you do with Mother Munson? At 95 years old. Some don't have the pleasure or the opportunity to have someone 95 years old to be in their company. Yeah. The pastor once said, I wish my mother was here at 95. Yeah. And I said, Pastor, I pity back along with you. Yes. So we praise and thank God who more blessings flow. Yeah. Mother Minnie, she's making progress. Making progress. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory to God. Yes, the Bible says, yes, we are surrounded by a cloud of witness and we're overcome by a testimony of blood of the Lamb. Sister Mary Smith is back with us. Uh, Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. She continued to fight the good fight yeah. and run a good race. Yeah. The pastor said, yes, that God wasn't done with Mother Moji. She's still holding on to God's unchanging grace. Alice Powell. Alice Powell. Alice Powell. The God told us to hold on to his garment. He will bless us. But in the meanwhile, we praise and thank God because I'm here to stand in the gap for the Mal Maloney family. There's no earthly sorrow that heaven can heal. Blesses he that mourn, they shall be comforted. And we believe on Matthew 5, 4 this morning. Because all of us is going to have a day in the court. When our loved ones transition from this side of the Jordan River. But in the meantime, Still much more work to be done. 
Those who know the power of prayer, pray with me. Can't help to forget. Can't help to forget the bone of my bone and the rib of my rib for three weeks. Couldn't walk. The young folks say, oh, the creation was created by protons and neutrons and molecules. But I stopped by to tell you, you didn't believe that Jesus walked on the water, which you read. I stopped by to tell you, you got enough time. Let me tell you her testimony. But I'm going to let her come back and tell her herself. Be like that one of the ten lepers. Y'all don't hear me. But in the meanwhile, in the meanwhile, let us continue to hold on to God's unchanging grace. Let us pray. A Father and a God, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, once again, oh God, we thank you. We adore you. We magnify your name, Heavenly Father. Why? It's because you're a God and you're a God all by yourself. You sit in the kingdom of heaven and look down upon your creation, O oh God. We bless your name, O oh God. Why did you choose earth for man to dwell on? Oh God, your word said we're going to understand it. Better and better, by and by, we all get to heaven and see Jesus. We're going to know why he chose earth for man to dwell on. We bless your holy name, O oh God. Oh, God, this morning, oh, God, we continue to stretch out our hand to thee, oh, God, because there is some, oh, God, that's on that bed of affliction. Some, oh, God, needs to hear you this morning, oh, God. There is some, oh, God, is not here with us this morning, oh, God, because, yes, they can get up out of that bed, oh, God, because why some just don't have the strength, Oh, God, but we are mindful, oh God, when you told, oh, God, yes, the man that, oh, God, to pull us alone, to pick up his mat and walk. Oh, God, we are believing for those, oh, God, that's on that bed of infliction this morning, oh, God. We believe, oh, God, by faith. We're not taking it back, oh, God. In your timetable, oh, God, we believe, oh, God, they're going to get up. And they're going to walk in the name of Jesus. Those hearts that are heavy, oh God, we believe, oh God, that you're going to continue to comfort them, oh God. When the flowers just stop, oh God, being sick, when the, when the doorbell stop being ringing, when the phones, oh God, stop being ringing, oh God, the doorbell, oh God, is shut down, oh God. You know that, oh God, that you're going to allow them to come into their private closet and you're going to comfort them. It may be the Maloney family today, oh God, but next week, oh God, somebody's going to be standing in the court that need to be strengthened, need to be comforted. We are mindful, oh God, we are pilgrims. This is not our home. We are just passing through. Let us be mindful, God. Why are we trying to hold on to the mansions and, oh, God, and the big cars, oh, God, and all of the George Washington and the Jeffersons, oh, God, all that. Oh, God, silver or gold, we have none. But, oh, God, yes, the power in prayer. We bless your holy name, oh, God. We thank you, Lord. Do part. Child, Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. Oh, God! Stop by. Oh, God, your word says, blessed is he, oh, God. For being not for such is the kingdom of God. Did the children sin? Oh, God. Did the parents sin? Oh, God. Let it be for your glory. Oh, God, yes, that child, oh, God. That child, oh, God, has gone through the storm. Heal their body, oh, God. In the name of Jesus, stretch out your hand to thee. Oh, God, some is wondering, how come they can't be home? How come they can't be out playing with their friends? Oh, God, how come, oh, God, they can't be on a playground? Because of sickness. Oh, God, touch them. We believe right now, oh, God, in the name of Jesus, that, oh, God, 
that your son, oh God. That's why he went to the cross. Because by his stripes we are healed. Stretch out your hand to thee, oh God. Someone, oh God, needs to hear from heaven, oh God, this day. Wash us and purge us, oh God, creating us a new heart. We need you, Lord, but we trust in you, oh God. The brothers talked about, oh God, he talked about the, 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 the mustard seed. We all got mountains in front of our way, oh God. You're the only one, oh God, can cast them away from us. Starting with me, oh God. Remove those mountains. In the name of Jesus. Oh God, we thank you this morning. We bless your holy name, oh God, this morning. None of us, oh God, have a rock to cast. Nor a stone, oh God, to aim. Help us, oh God. Draw us close unto you. Ride on, King Jesus. Ride on. And that is all said and done, oh God, of this service. Once again, Master, we'll be so careful to give you the glory, to give you the honor, and to give you the praise. Almighty powers of Calvary. Victory! 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 In Jesus' name. And all God's children say amen. 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 That's right. Lift him up. Give God a hand clap because victory is already won. Victory is already won. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yay, God. Come on, brother. Hallelujah. Yay, God. Praise the Lord, church. Yes, that's prayer. That's prayer. I want to thank Minister my, King my, my. Huh. for that powerful, yeah. informative prayer. Not a shame of you, oh God. Not a shame. At this time, we're going to have the scripture reading by Sister Bronte Ray. Yes. Yeah. Following that, we'll have our tithes and offering yes. by Pastor Ken Anderson. That's all right, man. Yeah. Come on, Bronte. Yes. Thank God. Bronte. Yeah, Sister Bronte. Yeah. Good morning, church. Good morning. I will be reading John the 11th chapter, verses 20 through 29 and 39 to 53. Mm -hmm. John 11, 20 to 29 reads, Now Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. Mm. But Mary was sitting in the house. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Mm -hmm. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Mm -hmm. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again mm -hmm. in the resurrection at the last day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection yes. and the life. Yeah. He who mm -hmm. believes in me. Though he may die, mm -hmm. he shall live. Yeah. And whoever lives and believes in me shall yeah. never die. Yeah. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the son of God, who is to come into the world. Mm. And when she had said these things, she went her way and secretly called Mary, her sister, mm -hmm. saying, the teacher has come and is calling for you. Mm -hmm. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came to him. John 11, 39 to 53. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time there is a stench, for he has been dead four days. Jesus. Jesus said to her, did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Mm -hmm. Then they took away the stone and the place where the dead man was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, yes. I thank you. That you have heard me, yes. and I know that you always hear me. Yeah. But because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe you, that you sent me. Now when he had said these things, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, Ooh. come forth. Yeah. And he who had died came Ooh. out bound, hand and foot with grave clothes. Oh. And his face was wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, 
loose him and let him go. Then many of the Jews who had come to Mary had seen the things Jesus did, mm -hmm. believed in him, yeah. but some of them went away to the Pharisees and told them the things Jesus did. Mm -hmm. Then the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered a council and said, what shall we do? For this man works many signs. If we let him alone like this, everyone will believe in him and the, Ro and the Romans will come and take away both our place and nation. Mm -hmm. And one of them, Caiaphas, being high priest that year, said to them, uh -huh. you know nothing at all, nor do you consider that this is expedient for us, that one man should die for the people mm -hmm. and not that the whole nation should perish. Mm -hmm. Now, this he did not say on his own authority, mm -hmm. but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus would die for the nation mm -hmm. and not for that nation only, mm -hmm. but also that he would gather together and one the children of God who were scattered abroad. Uh, then yes. from that day on, they plotted to put him to death. Yes. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Be to Hallelujah. God. Glory. Yes. 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 Awesome. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. All right. Praise the Lord, church. I want to thank <laughs> Sister Bronte yes. for that eloquently read scripture. Mm -hmm. Yes. At this time, we're going to have our tithes and offering. Yes. My sister, by senior pastor Ken uh -huh. Anderson. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Well, say Amen, church. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand, clap of Hallelujah. praise Hallelujah. for this wonderful worship service on today. Today is Palm Sunday, and as I said earlier, it marks the beginning of the most sacred time in our Christian calendar. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't noticed, Dale and Lee Haven, we're becoming two very, very busy churches. Hey, yes, and the Lord put it on my heart uh, last week to talk about the other side of mm -hmm. giving, yeah. the giving of ourselves, the giving of our service, the giving of our time to serve others. It is another aspect of stewardship. Yeah. Did you know that? Yeah. For many, the giving of their time is just and sometimes more challenging than the giving of their resources. I mean, you know, that's true. Yeah. The Lord wanted me to remind you at the beginning of this Holy Week mm -hmm. that his promises work equally yeah. for the giving of your time. Yeah as they do for the giving of your resources. That the sacrificial giving of your time can be just as impactful as the giving of your finances. Yeah. The truth is that our time, our resources, all of it belongs to God. Yeah. Yeah. And God wants us to spend the time he gives us with him in mind. Oh, y'all not hearing that? He wants us to give, to spend the time that he gives us with him in mind. God wants us to sow our tithe and our cheerful offerings, not just out of habit or the Bible says out of compulsion, but with him in mind. The Lord wants us to be intentional. Somebody look at somebody and say intentional. The Lord wants us to be intentional, not haphazard, in how we use those 24 hours in the day that everybody gets. Are you listening? He wants us to be intentional. The scripture goes on to say that even now, especially now, we even need to redeem the time. Because what? The days are evil. Be intentional on how you use those 24 hours in the day. Luke 6, 38 works in both instances when it says, given it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over will men give unto your bosom. Do you need more time in your life? Do you need more time? Somebody saying right now, Pastor, I ain't got enough time. Well, you need more time in your life, right? Then give more of your time to serving God. Yeah. Yeah. You need more time than give, according to Luke 638, give more of the time that you have to serving God. Yeah. 
God will free up more time in your life from places you never thought possible because you gave sacrificially of the little time that you do have to serve him. Need more resources in an area of your life? Then give sacrificially from whatever it is that you need more of. Did y'all catch that? Whatever you need, even if you think it's not much, time, your resources, give of that. And because of the spiritual law that works, you'll get more of what you need. That's how God multiplies what you need of, what you need. The world would say, hold on to the little you have. That's what the world says. God says, give some of it, give some of it to him mm -hmm. sacrificially because it will be a sacrifice. And if it's not a sacrifice, God's probably not, not involved. And if you do that, he will supernaturally free up more of what it is that you need more of to you. So family, whether it's time, whether it's money, whether it's joy, whether it's love, whether it's kindness, whether it's affection, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. I hear somebody say, I need some more affection today. <laughs> then give some yes, and you'll get some. I know that's the word. Yes, yes. God will multiply that which you have given. Do y'all hear me? We try to hold on to the little we got. Uh -huh. The biblical method is give it. To get it. Give to get. Look at somebody say give to get. Lord have mercy. I'm done. A word from the Lord for the, for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. Yeah. I know it's tight, but it's right. Amen. Well, we thank God. If you're not a member of Dale or Lee Haven and the Lord has placed it in your heart to bless the ministry, you can share your gift electronically through Cash App by contacting Sister Jane Archie, who's with us today at this number, 302-598-5516 for contribution to Dale. Sister Archie was carrying uh, her daughter, associate pastor, stuffing in the pulpit. So she got assigned with additional duties today. <laughs> Thank God she does everything. Yeah. Carrying her daughter stuff to the pulpit. Just, just do everything. Amen. Amen. Thank God for her. I'm telling on her. To give to Lee Haven, you can send your gifts. We now use Zelle here at Lee Haven. Zelle works very well, as far as I know. Um, that number is 302. 423-6883. Again, Zell number for Lee Haven, 302-423-6883. Now, I called that number the other day instead of sending it from my bank account, and Brother Carl answered the phone. Oh, my. So, so I, I hope my stuff is getting where it needs to go. Amen. 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 I, I know you're listening, Brother Carl. I, I know. I'm not worried. I'm not worried. I'm not worried. Or you can call Sister Cindy. Her number is 302-653-7619. You can also mail your gift tithes and offers to the following addresses. For Dale, you can mail them to Dale UMC, P.O. Box 190, Middletown, Delaware, 19709. And for Lee Haven, you can mail your gift tithes and offerings to Lee Haven UMC, 413 Blackbird Landing Road, P.O. Box 279, Towns in Delaware, 19734. Yeah. Would you join with me in a word of prayer? Amen. God, we are living in very, very different times today. Yes, we can't not turn the TV on without hearing about a catastrophe in Russia. Jesus. We can't turn the TV on without hearing about the economy. Some say it's doing good and there's no evidence of it in the acme. My, my, my. 
Lord, when I'm paying ten dollars for a banana, that ain't right. That ain't right, Lord. So we need you to be able to be in a position to bless us. And that's why we sow into your kingdom, Lord. Yes, Lord. Because we know that in your kingdom there is no inflation. We know that they're in your kingdom. There are no taxes. We know in your kingdom, Lord. You don't take a cut and then leave us with the, the dribblings. We know in your kingdom, Lord, you're faithful to your word. And you said, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together. Lord, you don't multiply to us on a linear basis. You say in your word that you multiply exponentially. So we thank you, Lord, that we have access. You've given us access into the kingdom of God, to the kingdom finances, to your plan to bless us financially. And Lord, you said that that principle not applies not only to our refinancial resources, but applies to every area of our lives. If we would just engage you that way, I pray that they heard you speak today, Lord, about this area of time. And how it relates also to what you said about it, about giving. Mm. Lord, many of us are looking for time to serve you more. Yes. They have a heart to do it, but because of the demands of their job, the demands of family, because they're caretakers for somebody, just so many other demands on their time. They haven't been able to really commit to serving you at the level that their heart desires. I pray that they heard you today and that they would carve out that little slither to serve you and starting this Holy Week in a way that they haven't been doing before as a sacrifice unto you. And the moment, Lord, you see them take that step, let them know that you there's a blessing in it by doing something for them that could only have been done by you by freeing up something for them that they did not expect. We thank you for all that you're doing, all that you've done, and all that you're going to do in our midst. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen. 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 That's all right. Yes. Yes. Amen. Praise yes. the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, mm. I want to thank Reverend Anderson for that. Yeah. Beautiful tie mm -hmm. prayer message. Yeah. Have one more announcement just in. Uh, on the 29th of March, from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m., mm -hmm. the Delaware Food Bank will be at the parking lot at Dale's giving away an abundance of food. Amen. That's March the 29th yeah. from 9 a.m. Mm -hmm. to 11 a.m. Yes. Amen. 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 At this time, we're going to have a selection by Sister Lavinia Johnson. Yeah. Mm -hmm. She's on the paper. I don't know. She's on the paper, paper. yes. Yeah. She's she good. Yeah. She good. She all right. She good. Or is it Brother Blackson? Uh -oh. come, come on, Brother Blackson. Why don't you, why don't you both come up? I don't know. After, okay, he's coming up. After that, we'll have the sermon by Pastor Ken Anderson, communion, and the altar call and benediction. Amen. God bless you all. Praise God. Well, he keep a song in his pocket. Praise the Lord, everybody. Before my cousin comes forth and blesses us with a song, I just wanted to remind everybody that our good friends. Friday worship service will be held at Dale Memorial United Methodist Church from 6.30 to whenever we're finished. So come out, uh, be blessed with us as we worship with the service of Tenebrae. Amen. 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 Mm. Praise the Lord. Yes. Praise the Lord. Yes. Yes. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah. I'm telling my sister, I'm telling my sister. Uh-oh. She said, she said, she said, she, her dues is paid up. They don't know why I ain't got no heat in here. Oh, no. Yes, she did. Yes, she did. Oh, no. Brother Kane's up here rubbing.
Georgia, and you see it. And it's cold out there, so you all ready to get the heat turned on. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. When we all yes. get to heaven, yes. what a day of rejoicing there will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout for victory. Oh, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout for victory sing the wonders love of jesus sing his mercy and his grace in that mansion bright and blessed he'll prepare for us a place oh when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing there will be when we all see Jesus we will sing and hope for victory let us then be true and faithful trusting serving every day just one glimpse of him in glory will the toll of life repay oh when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing there will be when we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout for victory. Oh, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing there will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout for victory. Oh, when we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing there will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout for victory. Yeah. Oh, when we all
share with us just before the word of the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Have your way, O God. We thank you. Use the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory. Use her. God. Yay, God. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Always ye be ready. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hey, God. Oh. Yeah, feel the spirit. Mm. Ah. Hey, hey, hey. Dry nails in my hand. Laugh at me. Come on, come on, come on. Where you stay? Yes, yes, Say it is in me. Very soon. Ah, 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 ah. 
Brother Jimmy and yes. Linda and Charles Bohr for those beautiful yes. selections, selections. Amen. Yes, well, we thank God for Palm Sunday. Yes, Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm encouraged by that song because if Jesus rose again, that means you can rise again. The enemy thought he had you, but you sure you getting back up. Amen. Sure you rising again. Amen. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Mm. Palm Sunday is traditionally considered the beginning of the Holy Week, as we've shared. Mm -hmm. yeah. And many of us have been traveling with Jesus over the Lenten season and mm -hmm. continue during this really challenging period. It was for him mm. um, over the over the holy ground that will take place through what is referred to as Maudie Thursday that's coming upon us. Maudie right. Thursday refers to uh, the Last Supper, and most of us know what happened at the Last Supper. Yeah. That mm -hmm. was immediately followed by Good Friday. Mm -hmm. I don't know wh where they got the term Good Friday. Actually, I don't think that's a biblical word. I think we just ended up because nothing was good about Friday, if y'all remember. Yeah. There was nothing good about Friday. Yeah. It was good for the enemy. But was nothing good about Friday, even though we believe that Jesus had to go through and do everything that he did in order to rise mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. early on Sunday morning mm -hmm. with yeah. the culmination of Holy Week this week that we're going through is, of course, a Resurrection Sunday. Pray that all of you will travel this week with us. Some of us may need to do something different spiritually to recognize this week. I will be fasting, and some of you, if you want to fast with me, uh, I know some of us have different medical conditions. If you have a desire to fast, check with your doctor, but fasting doesn't always, not always about food. Yes. You know, some of us, if, if we don't have a cup of coffee in the morning, that will be a serious fast for us. Yes, sir. Maybe if you just skip Duncan, skip Duncan for a couple days during the week. Instead of driving by Duncan and getting your decaf with two equals and three creams and a wake-up wrap. If you can't do Duncan, maybe you can forget the wake-up wrap with the sausage wake-up wrap. Fast without the sausage wake-up wrap. Do something sacrificially and honor the week. Some of you, you, you might, you might, I know one person is fasting by going to bed early. Instead of staying up. To uh -huh. one o'clock night because they're a busy person and, yeah. and, and they're going, they have made a commitment to go to bed at 10 o'clock. Yeah. And they're finding that just a couple days of doing that, they might continue that way beyond Holy Week. So do something special. Do something. Acknowledge. Stay connected to this week. Don't get caught up in just Monday morning everything. It's just like it always used to be. Get caught up in it somehow by doing something intentionally to recognize the week that we are entering in starting today, starting today. I want to recognize our, our worship leader today. Brother Brother Money lost a sibling, James Hendry, over the last week or so. We want to recognize him. We've talked about it. That family has seen some losses in the last several weeks and, and have been fighting um, and fighting and overcoming some illnesses. So we want to remember, remember Brother Money and his family and all all of that family today. Yes. I want to get into this powerful, powerful word today, this Palm Sunday word. And I have to read, we have, I have to read some different scriptures. And I don't know what Sister Bronte and Sister Bronte waiting on. She reads like a preacher. I know that's right. Come on. Come I know, on. you know, we've had a discussion of 10 years I've been yeah. here, and like every year, Bronte and I have a discussion about it. Um, and she committed. I'm putting her own blast on YouTube too right now. It, she committed to the Catalyst program and I told her I wouldn't bother her 
about it anymore. I didn't tell her I wouldn't talk about it from the pulpit. Though. So we just thank God for the gift that God has blessed her with. Amen. I want to read from John chapter 11, verses 39 through 53, just because I need some emphasis. And I want to have another scripture that's critical to our text today. In John chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, then 9 through 13. Verses 39 through 53, Jesus said, Take ye away the stone, Martha, the sister of him that was dead, said unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. And many of you know that after the third day, the body begins to deteriorate. The body begins to physically decompose and considered unclean, especially in the Jewish faith. So you, there was literally a stench associated with the body of Lazarus. And that's why Martha said what, what she said, but she, didn't, did not, she did not fully realize until later on who she was talking to. Mm. Jesus said unto her, said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. Mm. Mm -hmm. When we see a miracle take place, we see God's glory in yeah. yeah. full manifestation. Yeah. So it's the glory of God yeah. that we're looking at. Mm -hmm. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. Uh -huh. That means he prayed long before he got to that place. Mm -hmm. Long before he got to the gravesite. Mm -hmm. Verse 42, I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. There's another place right in here somewhere that Jesus showed up at the graveside and people started saying, if you would have come, if you didn't hang around Bethany when you first heard it, you stayed around four days later, I think it was. Jesus heard his, his friend was sick. Jesus, Jesus didn't get excited, didn't get agitated, didn't get upset just went on doing what he was doing. Mm -hmm. And people thought he, he wasn't sensitive, he didn't care or he was too busy, but he didn't show up until he was ready. And there was a reason for that, yeah. as yeah. many of us mm -hmm. now understand. And I knew that thou hearest me always, but because of the people, I, I said what I said here, verse 43. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to preach all that again today, but many of you know that if he, because the resurrection of life was calling the dead from the grave, if he didn't call Lazarus by name, old patriarchs that were still in the grave waiting on the resurrection would got out of the grave. Abraham would have got out of the grave. Jonah would have got up out of the grave. Deborah would have got up, Esther would have got up out of the grave if he didn't say Lazarus. And he that was dead came forth bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus saith unto them, Loose him and let him go. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary had seen the things which Jesus did, believed on him. Some people just not going to believe you until they see a miracle. That's why Jesus had to come in the New Testament dispensation. Blessed is he that believeth without seeing. Without seeing. But some of them went their ways and told the Pharisees, told them what things Jesus had done. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said, what do we? In other words, what do we do? For this man doeth many miracles. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him. And the Romans shall come and take away both our place and station. In other words, if we let Jesus keep doing what he's doing, people are going to run to him. They ain't going to be studying us. We won't have, we won't have anything uh -huh. to do with us. Uh -huh. We'll lose our positions. I'll lose my high priestship position. We'll lose our place and nation. And one of them, named Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, said unto them, Ye know nothing at all, nor consider that it is expedient that one man should die for the people and the whole nation perish not. And this spake he not of himself. 
actually Caiaphas with his conniving self spoke a little truth right there because exactly what he said would, is what would happen. This he spoke, he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation. And not for the nation only, but that also he should gather together in one, the children of God that were scattered abroad. Then from that day forth, they took counsel together for to put him to death. From to put him to death. John 12, verses 1 and 2, and verses 9 through 13. This is different from what Sister Bronte read. That Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus was. Y'all get that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This yeah. is the same brother that just get raised yeah, from the dead. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. Mm -hmm. There they made him a supper. Man, having dinner. You guys just got raised from the dead. <laughs> they made him a supper and Martha served. But Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Much people of the Jews therefore knew that he was there. And they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that, that they might see Lazarus also, whom he had raised from the dead. But the chief priests consulted that they might put Lazarus also to death. Be careful who you hang out with. Not only are they trying to kill Jesus, and they just consulted after he raised Lazarus from the dead that they were going to find out how to kill Jesus. But now Lazarus, they're after Lazarus now. Because he's walking around, hadn't been raised. Be careful who you who you connect to. On the on the next day, much people that were come to the feast, when they heard that Jesus was coming to Jerusalem, took branches of palm trees and went forth, went forth to meet him and cried, "Hosanna! Blessed is the King of Israel that cometh in the name of the Lord." And this is not in my scripture, but within two weeks, he would be dead. Scripture says, be careful when all men praise you. Think well of you. Be careful. Open up our eyes, Lord, that we might see and hear the wonderful things that are in your word. In Jesus name we pray. My text on this Palm and Communion Sunday Guess who's coming to dinner? Guess who's coming to dinner? I don't know. Some of you aren't old enough, but most of y'all in here are. Remember the plot of that 1967 film, Guess Who's Coming to Dinner? How many of y'all know about that movie? Most of the hands. I see some young, some young guns in here don't know what I'm talking about. But that movie featured the legendary black actor, Sidney Poitier, features a woman named Joey. She's a woman, her name is Joey though, who returns to her parents' home from vacation with a man she intends to marry soon. My daughters knew not to do that. Don't, don't you go. Don't they knew better than to go to Hawaii on vacation. And then bring back to my house somebody that I don't know, haven't met, haven't spoke to, haven't exchanged text messages with. Oh Lord, talk about y'all getting married. Well, that's what happened here. This man John, whom we learn is basically the perfect person a parent could ever want their child to marry, except for one major problem in 1967 when this film was made, and it even would be a problem still in places in the world today. Joey the woman was white, and John was black. And of course, Joey's parents did not know that the man their daughter wants to marry and who's coming home to dinner with her is an African-American. Didn't know that. 
From that time onward, the term that came from that movie, Guess Who's Coming to Dinner, suggests some kind of unexpected, significant surprise. In this instance, a guest at dinner that would shake up the world of Joey's parents. That same kind of shocking surprise could would be caused when Jesus arrived in Bethany six days before Passover. And there with Mary and Martha, the sisters of Lazarus, would be another special dinner guest that evening, who would not be Jesus, but Lazarus who had just a little while earlier been raised from the dead by his friend Jesus. And now they are both in Bethany at the same time for the Passover, getting ready to have dinner together. Lord, 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 wonder if that would happen here. Let's just say, and God forbid that if it would happen, Minister Cain passed away. And I felt led to go to Congo, where Minister Kane was laying. I don't know how soon they embalmed the body, but I would go as soon as I could and go forth and tell my friends over at Congo, where, where does he lie? And go in there and get everybody out of the room who wouldn't believe and said, Minister Congo, uh -huh. or Minister Kane, <laughs> come forth. <laughs> and of course, we would shake up the whole place as he got up out of where he was. Vomiting and fluid would start pouring out, and Minister <laughs> Kane started walking out. And I'd walk him out, probably, he wouldn't have his car, so I'd probably drive him where he needed to go. <laughs> And the word, you know how we are, the word would get out quick. The word would get out quick. Pastor Anderson went to Congo where Minister King was. 